We dismiss history at our peril. Liberty Nation Radio with Mark Angelides. Racking up fine after fine for contempt of court, Donald J. Trump faces the wrath of the judge, or is it the wrath of the Constitution? That's what we're here to find out with Liberty Nation's legal affairs editor, Mr. Scott Casenta. Thanks for being here, Scott. Cheers, Mark. My pleasure. So, Scott, the background here, Donald Trump is in court and at time of recording has received 10 fines of $1,000 each for various contempts of court. Now, I guess what we really want to dig into is just how constitutional is it to find someone for speaking about their personal circumstances? Yes, this is an area that is largely untested because most of the, the cases involve people who don't have ongoing uh, presidential campaigns and giant social Most, media I'd say a, lot, a very large percentage right? don't have ongoing yeah. presidential campaigns. So, uh, so, you know, typically a witness who may grouse about, you know, being locked down with their speech, uh, the locking of that speech down doesn't affect so much else in their life like it does with Donald Trump. Sort of his stock in trade is his quick quips and punching back twice as hard against people that are punching him verbally uh, or otherwise. And so it's a different animal altogether. It's, you know, they, this is a special prosecution for Donald Trump and, uh, and he's, you know, obligated to special rules uh, regarding its prosecution. So I, I think we need to dig into it really what a... a and just a in case that wasn't clear, that was that was me being sarcastic and <laughs> saying was. that the special prosecution is one that any other American would not have to undergo. This yeah. is totally and, and exclusively about politics, demonstrated, Mark, by uh, the idea that Stormy Daniels is brought in to testify when there is no discrepancy over the facts regarding her testimony, which is to say the existence of the hush money agreement uh, that everybody likes to call it um, is not in dispute. Trump hasn't said that he hasn't engaged in a hush money uh, agreement. And so Ms. Daniels never discussed the agreement with Mr. Trump in advance of its signing or afterwards. So what does she have to offer testimony? Well, tons and tons of headlines and salaciousness and getting, you know, some uh, extramarital affair into the record for uh, the prosecution. It seems like there is no legal justifiable reason for it, um, except to embarrass Donald Trump. Well, actually, th there's there's another reason here, Scott. And I'm, I might be wrong on this because and I've got to say this. Again, I say this every every episode where we have these legal discussions. I'm not a lawyer, so I, I don't know. But you've distinguished yourself uh, in that regard. I appreciate it. I've distinguished myself in not being a lawyer. That's thank you. I, I, I'm Fam also fam famously Jimmy McNulty in the uh, brilliant TV series The Wire was. Uh, accused of being a lawyer uh so somebody said you're not a lawyer and he said why would anybody pretend to be a lawyer who wasn't one as if it was uh, a disease and i appreciated that in any case okay so here's an angle that maybe uh is right or wrong you tell me what you think by bringing in stormy daniels who as you say doesn't have any bearing on how donald trump filed his paperwork because she had no contact with him regarding his filing of the paperwork and other witnesses this is stopping donald trump talking about pretty much anything that he might want to talk about so for example it's almost want... mark as if the entire exercise was devised not as an effort to deliver justice to the people of new york or against a mal a malefactor like donald trump but instead to hobble his political ambitions and frustrate his campaign for president. It's almost like it was designed exclusively to accomplish that goal. Now, we know that can't be true because that would be counter to notions of justice that all those prosecutors and the, the uh, Judge Merchant are sworn to uphold. And yet, somehow, it just seems exactly, exactly like that. Sure coincidence, Scott. I'm absolutely sure of it. So, yeah, by bringing in... Uh all these other witnesses. He's essentially not allowed to talk about these witnesses. Now, I want to talk about what he has talked about and why these contempt acts apply. And specifically because you and I can talk about what he talked about. In fact, 
Washington DC's most notable newspaper, literally listed every single thing that Donald Trump has said and been fined for contempt with. Now, my understanding here, Scott, is a gag order is there to allow, and I, I, this is very loose definition, of course, is, is for allow the betterment of the judicial proceedings to continue, right? It's to stop any hindrance against a legal process, a legally and a legally processing and legal process. But so, for example, if you have a, a mafioso captain, obviously every school child in America knows the mafia don't exist, but let's not go there. Uh, if you had a mafioso captain, a capo di tutti, capo, you, uh, and he you're, wanted You're not to, doing well with the nomenclature, Mark. Um, I, I, I have read every piece of work that Mario Puzo has ever done. Thank you very much. And that's a all capo that's is just a capo. Any. Okay. So there you go. Okay. Thank you for that. So yeah. let's say one of these non existent uh, mafioso captains, let's say they were being uh, brought before the court and they wanted to intimidate a witness and they would say something along the lines of, you know, it'd be a real shame if anything happened to the witness and his family. That would just be a crying shame if their house for some reason just burnt down. That's what a gag order is for, right? Well, that actually is a veiled threat. And so I think that, that the, the gag order is actually for a, a lower standard than, than that thinly veiled threat. It would be more like the people in this office are all, you know, scum or liars or something like that and refer to, uh, you know, some identifiable small group of people just to induce hate and scorn and frustrate their kind of existence, you know? Um, okay, well, let, let's go with that standard for my hypothetical mm -hmm. here then. Yeah, So because, because, because with your hypothetical... That would just be seen, I think, as a veiled threat, and it could be prosecuted that way, um, okay. rather than a more subtle or 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 non-threat, just something that's designed to frustrate somebody's existence uh, in terms of you know. Okay, their so that, that that this actually even fits better in with my my scenario here. So Donald Trump can't say these things, right? Because he's in contempt of court because it serves a specific purpose that the judge does not want to happen. And yet, every media outlet in the entire country can reprint these things. So therefore, the net effect of what he said is is Yeah, is so what you're struggling with, let, let me interrupt you. Because every say, media outlet in the country is doing it because it's under the gag order. Right. So Donald Trump's free speech rights are impinged because he is in a criminal trial. This is not up for debate. There, there's no, that's not a revelation to anyone. The question is whether that's okay, um, <laughs> given given the circumstances. I think, but there's no dis there's no dispute over whether there is an impingement on First Amendment rights while at trial. There is. It has always been, uh, to my knowledge, the the Supreme Court has never ruled on a on on a case regarding this. And my guess would be that it hasn't come up because we haven't had the system being used as it's being used in this instance, meaning it's not being used to protect the innocent or, or uh, you know, work a day person who happened to have seen, uh, you know, a gangland style murder and is testifying against it or some other thing uh, that is sort of more typical in the criminal justice world, but it's being used to frustrate an American's you know, the leading contender for the presidency to run for the presidency. And uh, and so, you know, yeah, we, we've got a we've got a, a rip in the time space continuum here where a rule was implemented for, I, I think, entirely legitimate purposes so that uh, the accused couldn't frustrate uh, the notions of justice that, you know, we, we are hopefully, you know, in the best sense of things, a trial is working through. And uh, and now we have this other, you know, sort of dog's lunch that we're dealing with, which is uh, them just throwing anything they can at Donald Trump, it seems like. So it surprised me with the, the how novel this is, then, that there isn't a challenge in place to the contempt of court from some of Donald Trump's solicitors. OK, so people in America don't know what solicitors are. You'll have to uh, lawyers, Americanize, sorry, lawyers. Americanize your English there, please. Um, yeah, well, it is. It's just that something that will be fixed later on after the presidential election. So the courts are not designed for some kind of rapid response 
like, okay, the trial judge did X, let's examine all these uh, problems that occurred at the trial level. That's not how our system is set up. Our system is set up, you know, we've talked before, Mark, on this program about some interlocutory uh, appeals that have gone on or appeals that are, that uh, take place before the trial uh, is concluded. And that, that's a rarity. Our mm -hmm. system is set up so that you get a trial. And if you don't like the decisions that the trial judge made or uh, they went against you and you're convicted, then you can appeal those decisions. But mm. before, it's before then, it's, you know, even, even if it costs you the presidency, you know, it's not set up for like, oh, well, let's, let's, you know, integrate in our decision making that this may cost uh, a person the presidency. And then, of course, the, the uh, corollary to that is frustrate the will of if it would, in fact, cost them the presidency, the American people uh, to elect a president of their choosing, perhaps. So that's just not baked into our system. It, it seems a bit of an oversight. To be honest, Scott, because I don't know, man. We've we, we've we, how many how many hundred years are we are we down the road in this republic without having confronted the issue? Well, well, my point is, Scott, that if this does indeed frustrate Donald Trump from the presidency, it seems like a surefire way that some. I'm not saying this particular president now, but some less moral president in future might think, "Hey, keeping my opponent in court and sure. wrapped up in having his free speech rights yes. curtailed." Well. Mark, our system, the U.S. system, depends entirely on most of the significant actors not being uh, corrupt, uh, you know, self-dealer power brokers, but instead having some kind of uh, greater good in mind and uh, adhering to their obligations under the Constitution. And to the like, we, we don't have a system that's set up to deal with somebody who's just willing to do whatever they want to get power, you know, especially if there's multiples of those people. In other words, it's not just perhaps a prosecutor, but the entirety of the prosecutor's office or the prosecutor and a judge, for instance. Um, you know, we're, we're just not set up to uh, as bulwarks against those realities. That, that's all what's coming to fruition now. And I don't know that our system can survive it uh, if you know, pressed to the wall on these things because it's it's not set up for that. We, and if you think about the practicality of how that would work, what would we have a special Supreme Court window at the at the courthouse for Donald Trump appeals, where like every day there's a new thing. Okay, here's the latest gag order. Does this meet constitutional muster? It's kind of preposterous. Uh, Although perhaps system. even necessary. Scott DiCosenza, we'll be right back with you after this short break. Don't go anywhere. We dismiss history at our peril. Liberty Nation Radio with Mark Angelides.